you are looking for the very best plug and play tactics for FM23, you have come to the right place. Whether you're just a bit short of time or you fancy a complete overhaul of your tactical style, here on the channel I will test the tactics so you don't have to. In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at attacking 4-3-1-2. In today's video we are going to be looking at a tactic that has been created by GYRFM and Hood Gaming. I believe this was set up for FM22. So in today's video we're going to find out how this tactic fares in FM23. Let's break down some positions for you to start us off. We're going to have a goalkeeper who is set to defend. On the left you've got an inverted wing back set to support. Two central defenders who are set to defend. And on the right hand side we have an inverted wing back who is set to support. Moving up the pitch we have a deep line playmaker who is set to defend. On the left a central midfielder set to attack. On the right a central midfielder set to attack. Moving up the pitch we have a shadow striker set to attack. A deep line forward set to support. And a pressing forward who is set to attack. So the tactical style is set out in a 4-3-1-2. It comes with a custom tactical style. Its mentality is attacking. Its in possession will look like this. Its in transition looks like this. Its out of possession will look like this. As I said, this is a tactic that was set up for FM22. It's be interesting to see how it gets on in FM23. I'm going to put it through its paces in a single season sim using Brentford, Rayo Vallecano and Torino. We're kicking things off by looking at the results in the Premier League. And you can see that Brentford have finished 9th. If we look at their overall standing, we can see they played 38 games. They won 15 they drew 8, they lost 15, scored 69 goals, conceded 63, which left them a 6 goal difference and they finished on 53 points. So that was 7 points behind Newcastle and they finished 6th qualifying for the Europa Conference League and they did finish 15 points behind Arsenal who finished in 5th and they were even further behind 18 points behind Aston Villa who managed to get themselves into the Champions League by finishing in 4th. If we go to the profile of the league we can see that they don't feature too heavily in terms of any of the stats categories but if we have a little look Ivan Tony got 18 goals. Mbwemo got 16. In terms of average ratings, they didn't have a single player inside of the top 20. For assists, they had Matthias Jensen with 10 and Mikhail Damsgaard with 10. For player of the match awards, they had Damsgaard with 4 and Tony with 4. In terms of clean sheets, they had David Raya with 9. For yellow cards, they did top that category. Aaron Hickey getting himself 18 yellow cards. So one to look out for in terms of your wing backs. For distance covered per 90 minutes, Keen Lewis Potter down here with 14.48. He's in 20th place. Tackles per 90 minutes, they have Henry with 3.94 and Jensen with 3.66. And dribbles per 90 minutes, they had Henry with 5.89 and Hickey with 5.00. So, all in all, they haven't had too bad of a Premier League campaign. If we go back to the competitions tab, we can see that they got through to the semi-finals of the FA Cup where they were knocked out by Hull City. And they were knocked out in the fourth round by Tottenham Hotspur in the Carabao Cup. Up next we have moved to Italy and we are looking at Torino. We can see that they have finished in 7th place in Serie A. And if we break down their 38 game campaign, we can see they played 38. They won 19. They drew 8. They lost 11. Scored 73. Conceded 65. Had a goal difference of 8. 
and they finished on 65 points. So that was only three points behind Juventus, who qualified for the Europa Conference League. They were also only three points behind Atalanta, who qualified for the Europa League, but they were 14 points behind Napoli, who were in fourth place and that final Champions League place. If we go to the profile page of the league, we can see once again, not troubling too many of the stats categories, but if we go and look a little bit further, they had Vlasic, he got 20 goals, Pellegri got 16, Sanabria got 15. If we go back and look at the average ratings, Vlasic got 7.24, Sanabria 7.22. In the assists category, they had Sanabria with 9 and Vlasic with 9. We can clearly see those two players have thrived in this tactic. For player of the match awards, once again, Sanabria with 6, Vlasic with 5. Clean sheets, let's have a look at where the goalkeeper finished. So Milinkovic Savic getting seven clean sheets. For yellow cards, once again, two players appear in the yellow cards category with Vodvoda and Aina getting 17 and 16. For distance covered per 90 minutes, you had Ilkan with 14.73 and Singo with 14.64. For tackles per 90 minutes, Aina got 3.88. He was also top of the dribbles per 90 minutes, coming in with an impressive 8.11. And Vodvoda got in there with a 5.88. So seventh place in Serie A. If we look at the competitions tab, we can see that they got knocked out in the second round of the Coppa Italia by Udinese. Finally, we are looking at La Liga and we are checking out the season that Rayo Vallecano had. And we can see that they have finished 12th in La Liga. If we check out their 38 game record, they played 38, they won 13, they drew 7, they lost 18, scored 63 goals, conceded 82, and a minus 19 goal difference. And they got 46 points. And that was 11 behind Villarreal, who finished in 7th. It was 18 behind Seville, who finished in 6th. And it was 22 points behind Valencia, who qualified for the Europa League. The rest of the teams are even further away from them. If you go to the profile page, we can see that they're not troubling the stats page once again. Uh, Randy and Teca getting 13 goals and Garcia getting 11 for the average ratings. They had Enteca get 7.16 for the assists. They ended up with Alvaro Garcia with 8 and Randy Inteca with 8. For Player of the Match awards, they didn't have anybody inside the top 20 players for match, Man of the Match awards. For Clean Sheets, didn't have their goalkeeper feature and with that goal difference, I am not surprised. For Yellow Cards, they had Fran Garcia with 12 and Baliu with 11. Distance covered per 90 minutes, nobody in the top 20 players there. For tackles per 90 minutes, they had Valentin with 4.03. For dribbles per 90 minutes, 5.77 for Fran Garcia. So, slightly disappointing for Rayo Vallecano. Couldn't get any higher in the Liga than 12th. When we look at their other competitions, we can see they were knocked out in the fourth round by Mallorca in the Copa del Rey. So, we have had Brentford finish in 9th, Torino finish in 7th, and Vallecano finished in 12th. Right then, if you're still with me at this point of the video, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button to help the channel, I really, really would appreciate it. Watching the channel grow across the past couple of months has been fantastic, and it's all down to people like yourself who are watching this video and listening to me right now. Before you go, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel. We have other things such as non-league tactic testing, Wonder Kids, Let's Plays, Rebuilds, a little bit of something for everybody right here on the channel. But for this one, I'm going to wrap it there. Big thank you for watching. I'll see you on another video soon.